Let's start with the BOJ, that big red box that we can see on your, on your right-hand side uh, there around the Japanese five-year. So that's where we're seeing some movement, also seeing movement at the 10-year, moving in, in the opposite direction to the, to the rest of the bond market, surreal, certainly to, to, uh, to what we've seen of late as the dominant dynamic. Mark, how significant do you think this is around the BOJ? They do have form uh, 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 when it comes to acting just before Christmas. I seem to remember this, uh, this time last year. They do have form active for Christmas. They also have form surprising the market and doing what it's least expected. No one expected much from this BOJ meeting. Um, and, I, and, you know, suddenly it's feeling live. But it feels just like traders are kind of protecting themselves of a tail risk option in December rather than any belief that something would happen now. It does seem strange because a lot of the indicators in Japan have been kind of soft in other way. It's not clear that they've got that very long-term sustainable inflation in a world where the rest of the world has experienced deflation and yields are coming lower. So it'll be a strange time to move. But the, 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 the moves are being exacerbated by the fact that we have had low liquidity, both in Treasuries in the Asia session, but also in JGB. So it seems a little bit dramatic. And you've got to remember, this is 10-year yields. Looks dramatic. 12 basis points. Big flashing red box. It is up 12 basis points to 0.75%. And that's just to put it in context that we're talking about a collapse in US 10-year yields to 4.17%, which just kind of shows how depressed they are. So, you know what, this is about traders hedging a tail risk rather than real expectations of a change in two weeks' time. OK, that's really important context to add. I, I want to turn to commodities now, because there we're seeing a broader story than just oil. But oil is substantially weaker than just a few weeks ago. 74.60 on Brent. The market putting demand concerns ahead of supply cut commitments that we've heard about from OPEC+. Plus. Yeah, this oil story goes into the BOJ story. It would be strange to them now because they're having such collapsing energy prices, which is a large part of the head fund inflation component in Japan because it really relies on energy imports. But oil prices absolutely collapsing, and they're really kind of helping this bond rally extend at a time when many people, including most of my team, kind of thought the bond rally had gone far enough already even a day or two ago. So it's, it's really kind of uh, messing with the market. Yes, this is a largely a supply side story. There are just so many different producers now and not everyone is complying with OPEC plus once and OPEC plus is a, a dwindling share of overall supply in the world. But this is also sending an extremely negative message about demand. You know, this is playing into the idea that it's a much more dramatic hard landing. One of the interesting dynamics we've talked about over the last uh, few weeks is that all the indicators look like a soft landing. Even for people like me who believe it won't be a soft landing, it'll be a hard landing. We've gone through that soft landing period. Ironically enough, oil prices and what's happening at bond markets at the moment are trading a dramatically hard landing in the very short term. Now, that may pass, but we had flattening curve, we had equities weakened despite lower yields, and we had dollar stay bid despite lower yields, and we had oil prices collapsing. That's a hard landing trading day.